Why Harry and Meghan lost in the power struggle with King Charles. Even after all their criticism and truth bombs, the Duke and the Duchess of Sussex ended up on the losing side in their beef with the royal family. Harry and his wife, Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, may have spent the past two years waging a gruelling, endless battle of wits and PR strategy against the firm, but they have actually ended up on the losing side. Welcome to the family. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications bell, so you don't miss any updates about the British royal family. Over the past two years, the Sussexes have thrown a lot of barbs at Charles, Queen Camilla, William, and Kate, and the monarchy institution as a whole. Questions have been asked about the skin color of the Duchess's unborn child, titles were not freely handed out. Sussex's denied hugs are not taught. Blind eyes turn to critical reporting, mental health crises rank under Orbison rugs, then there was the time William swung at his brother and Dog Bowl paid the ultimate price. However, today, on the other side of all this, after about 40 hours of interviews and various media outings, after 416 pages of a book and a whole, very long documentary series, one thing is clear, the royal family is doing fine. Some of the Sussexes' claims about Prince Harry's family and the way the royal machine operates are easier to overlook than others that have rightly tarnished the Windsor's image. For one thing, Meghan didn't get the support she needed, and quickly, when she struggled with suicidal thoughts in 2019. On the other hand, there is the infamous skin tone comment about how dark their first child's skin was, which was made to the Duchess while she was pregnant with Archie by an unnamed relative in London. Comedian Chris Rock may have recently dismissed this as just a son-in-law but the royal family's insensitivity and lack of awareness when it comes to their first biracial member reflects very poorly on them. In January, as Harry takes a break from his new life in the States, which seems to involve communicating with hummingbirds and occasionally mending his neighbor's hose, he spells out what he hopes to get from his father and brother. Speaking to The Telegraph's Brian E. Gordon, he said he wanted some accountability, and an apology to my wife. Addressing them directly, he said, because you know what you did, and now I know why you did it. And you got caught, so just be clear and then we can all move on. However, Charles made no unilateral external concession to his son and daughter-in-law. There were no apologies, no acknowledgments that perhaps the royal family could have done more or might have erred in the least. The House of Windsor has sailed through this storm and made it to the other side. And that leaves Harry and Meghan having played all their cards and the king not blinking once. Even if the exiled couple were to, say, appear on Good Morning America to unleash a new barrage of their signature brand of truth bombs in London, I think the public reaction would be one of collective shrug. Like the boy who cried wolf, as the Duke and Duchess repeated very similar claims over and over with each retelling, the audience's shock, outrage, and rage melted away more and more. At what point will they realize that this is a game of rapidly diminishing returns for them? Despite everything, Buckingham Palace is still standing. King Charles is busy planning his first foreign state visit to France and Germany, Queen Camilla is meeting enthusiastic, flag-waving crowds, William has gone to Poland to give a masterclass in soft power, and this week Kate has conquered nine world countries. The largest companies to help her in her work in her early years. Thanks for watching till the end.